Okay, so let's take a look at how to do uh, this question here, number 12. So this is a word problem where we end up having a quadratic equation um, as part of the model. And then the, the equation models basically the change in revenue um, whenever we change the number of um, the cost for each of the seats. So this question is a little tricky because one, you have to get the equation correct. Um, and then we have to solve essentially for a maxima or a minima, which because we're going to have a quadratic or a parabola. And then, um, and then we'll see where the, um, where the vertex of this lies. So first thing let's do is let's go through and see if we can set up the equation correctly here. So it says here, the cost of a ticket to a basketball gym seating 700 fans is $3. So that means our ticket price here is... Um, so tickets cost $3, okay? And it looks like we would, could have up to 700 fans. So that means um, the max revenue we could make would be 700 times three, which is $2,100. So that's really all we know from that first sentence. Okay, and it says at this price, all the seats are filled. The owner estimates that if the price is increased, the attendance will fall by 100 will fall by a hundred, so a hundred people for every dollar in increase. Okay, what ticket price results in the greatest revenue? So that's what we're looking to generate an equation to model. So the first thing we wanna do is we need to define a variable that we're looking for here. So the, it's, and it's kind of, it's hidden in this third sentence. The owner estimates that if the price is increased, the attendance will fall for every dollar increase. So that's going to be our variable that we need to define. So we're going to say let x equal the, the dollar increase in price. Okay, so if it goes up a dollar, if it goes up two dollars, if it goes up three dollars, we're going to have a corresponding um, change in revenue. So the next thing you should, we need to understand is how do you actually calculate revenue? So revenue, okay, is equal to the cost per ticket. Okay, so we know that right now it's set at $3. Okay, cost per ticket times the number tickets sold. Well, we can just say tickets sold. Okay, so that's in our head how we have to figure out um, what's going on here. So if, if tickets cost three dollars um, and we could sell seven hundred, we know our revenue is going to be twenty one hundred. But we've got a, some variability now because we want to play with the price. So our ticket, our cost per ticket, is always going to be at a minimum three dollars, and X is going to be the dollar increase in price. So we could write an expression to say, what is our cost per ticket if we were to have the increase? Okay, so the, incre the cost per ticket if we increase, okay, is just going to be three plus X. Okay, and X, we don't know how high we're going to go, but we know that if we didn't do an increase, it would just be $3. If we did a $1 increase, the cost per ticket would then be $4. Okay, so that's the expression that gives us the cost per ticket. Now we have to figure out how many, how, what is the relationship between increasing cost and selling tickets um, and how many get sold. So it says here the attendance will fall by 100 for every $1 in increase. So if we think about this, if, if we make no increase in price, okay, that means X is zero. The number of tickets sold is going to be $700. But let's say we increase the value of the ticket by $1. So that means X is one. Okay, that means the tickets now cost $4. How, how many tickets would we expect to sell? Well, it says for every dollar we increase, we're going to lose 100 people buying tickets. So that means we can expect the number of tickets sold to be, go down to 600. Okay, and then if X is equal to $2, we would sell two times 100 less from the original amount. So it would be 500. Okay, so we need to somehow think about that as being in an ex as an algebraic expression for tickets sold. 
Okay, and the way we would come up with that is, well, we can say the maximum number of tickets we can only sell is 700. Okay, and we subtract 100 tickets for every dollar sold. So that would mean we subtract 100 tickets times the number, times the, the dollar value of the price that it increases. So the correct expression for the number of tickets sold given a rise in ticket price is 700 minus 100x. Okay, and that's the pattern that we see here on the side. So if, it's, if, if we make no increase, we sell 700 tickets because it's 700 minus 100 times zero, which is 700. If it's one, it's gonna be 700 minus 100 times one, which is 100, which is equal to 600 and so on. Okay, so this is what our equation ends up becoming. So this is a quadratic equation because we have x in two terms here. So we need to do, um, the next step here would be to just expand the terms. So three times 700 is 2100. Three times negative 100 is negative 300x. X times 700 is 700x. There's our, that's gonna be our middle term. And then X times negative 100, X is negative 100x squared. Okay, so what we have here is we do have a quadratic equation. It just kind of looks a little odd. So I'm just gonna rearrange some terms so that we have it um, all together. So I'm gonna bring the negative 100x to the front here. And then I'm gonna collect like terms. So this is gonna give me plus 400x plus 2100. So this is our quadratic equation. Okay, and a couple things that we're gonna know here is we have a negative number in front of the x. So if we were thinking about sketching this equation, we would have, this would be a parabola that opens downwards, okay? Which means that the vertex is actually gonna be a maximum at some point. Okay, I just made a sketch here. I don't know where the zeros are, where it crosses the x-axis, but I do know that it opens downward, which means that it's, it's going to be a maxima. So the question is, is we wanna find at what price is the maximum revenue achievable? So we are actually looking for this price right here. Okay, x, whatever value for x is right here, that is going to be the dollar value increase that gives us max revenue. Okay, so we need to figure out what number is that vertex, okay? So this is going back to similar to some of the other questions that were done, where all we really need to do is we need to do, a, we could do, a, do this a couple of ways. We could graph the equation, okay? And there are some easy to use graphing tools um, you can use your graphing calculator. You could use um, the website desmos.com, which allow us to graph this equation quickly. And then we could find out where the vertex is. Okay, or the other way to do it is we can put the equation into the, um, the vertex form. Okay, vertex form for um, quadratics, which is essentially this equation, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So it's that equation where we know the vertex is gonna be h and k. So um, I'll kind of review this both ways here and then we'll see um, how, how you can work the math out. Um, I like to use um, a graphing tool for a question like this just because the numbers are quite large Okay, and at some point, once you understand how to work with the equation, um, a question like this is just, you're easy, it's better to use a computational tool to help you. So I'm gonna switch over to uh, my tool here called desmos.com. And what I've done is um, I've typed in the equation negative 100 plus 400x plus 2100. Okay, there's a, you just type it in into the bar that you have there. And right away, the, um, the equation um, editor will start to graph this, this, this equation. Now, the one thing I, you do have to do is you're gonna have to change the scale if you're using this tool, because this equation is quite large. So I'm just gonna open up my little wrench here. And what I did is I changed the x axis to be um, well, negative, I'm gonna put here negative 50 to 50. And I know my y-axis is going to be quite large because um, if you let it graph normally, you're gonna see that the lines just keep going up. 
So I'm going to set a limit of like 3000 and I'm going to set the Y axis to just something below there, which is about a hundred. Okay. And then what we can see is we see, we have a very, very long and narrow parabola. So right away, we actually do know where the maximum um, value for X is going to be here. If I touch the top point here, it will give me the coordinate and it tells me that when X is equal to two, my maximum, um, revenue here, which is what Y is calculating will be $2,500. Okay. So the two tells us how many increments of, of, um, of ticket prices we should add. That means we're going to add $2 at maximum ticket price increase. And that will give us a $2,500, uh, maximum revenue. Okay. So from the graphing tool. Okay. So if we do the graph, Okay, we find that the max occurs um, at X equals two. Okay, so that's the dollar increase in price. Okay, and the revenue, um, the max revenue is equal to $2,500. Oops, 2,500. So that would be the, um, that would be one way to solve this equation. Okay. Where you're allowed to use your, either a graphing calculator or, or, um, or, or, or a program like this. So just remember if at the $2 mark where that's how much we're adding. So the tickets are actually going to cost, um, two, three dollars plus two. So the tickets are actually going to end up going to $5 and you're going to get a max revenue at, um, at 2,500. Now, if you wanted to do it the other way, um, this is a bit of a longer way to do it, um, but it involves completing the square, but I'll, I'll show you how this works. Okay. So we have our equation here, negative 100 X squared plus 400 X plus 2100. Okay. And what we really need to do is we need to put this into that um, vertex form. Okay. So what we are trying to isolate is group together this term. Okay. And then we'll leave the rest, um, uh, out of it. So the first thing I can see here is that I can factor out a negative 100 from both of these terms here. So this is going to give me plus four, whoops, that's going to actually be minus four X. I'm going to take out a negative 100. So that's going to leave me with positive X squared minus four X, um, plus 2100. Okay. So what we need to do is create something in this middle term here where we can factor, um, and then, and be able to put it into the, the vertex form. Cause we have to have X minus H squared. Okay. So going back to our rules for, um, creating a perfect square trinomial. Okay. We could actually do the following here. Keep the hundred on the outside. We have the X squared by itself. Okay. I have the minus four X. What I'm going to do is I've got to add a term here and I'll have the 2100 leave on the outside. I'm going to add a number here that will make this a perfect square trinomial. So if we remember from our rules before, we'll take the middle term. Okay. Which is negative four. We'll divide that by two. So that's going to give us um, negative four divided by two, which is negative two. And then we square that which means that we can add a plus four. Okay. So we're going to kind of fill in an imaginary or a missing term to make that a perfect square trinomial. Okay. Now the only catch that you have to remember with this problem is I'm adding a plus four here, but what I'm really adding, and I'll just connect these in red is I'm actually adding a negative 400 because I'm really, I have to, I can't forget about this negative 100 on the outside. Okay. So, in, so I'm adding a negative, um, uh, sorry, a negative 400. Okay. And then to offset that, I have to add, I'll just leave it in red here. Okay. I have to offset that by adding 400 on the same line because it's kind of like a teeter totter, right? You can't add more to one side of the equation because we're changing it. So we have to undo it by adding the opposite, um, within the same line. Okay. So what I'm really doing here is I'm adding negative 400. Okay. So to offset negative 400, I have to add positive 400. Okay. That means the net change is zero. Okay. But what that gives me is it gives me a way to factor this equation because this becomes X 
minus 2 squared plus 2500. Okay, so the, the, um, the vertex for this equation, okay, remember it, if we're, we're having it in standard form, it's x minus h, so the h part here is 2, and then the k part is 2500. So we end up getting the same answer as compared to the graphing solution. Okay, we're going to add two units of increments to the price, so that will give us 3 plus 2, which is 5, and then 2,500 is our max revenue. Okay, so that's uh, how you would want to approach this question. Um, it's a little tricky because there you have to derive it from the word problem, um, and you end up getting a fairly messy quadratic, and then you have to kind of look at a couple of ways to solve it. Okay, I numbers when numbers are that big, I always like to use um, a computational tool because I just want to see how the math is working out rather than working at manipulating the math into another form. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Um, and uh, that's how you do that question.